Hi, uh, Tony Fowle here again. Uh, in this video I want to talk about uh, a small vacuum chuck that I made for holding small pieces uh, on the mill table for uh, some engraving like this on this small piece and making small printed circuit boards. Um, I'll also talk about uh, vacuum work holding in uh, general because it's used quite a lot uh, in home workshops for um, wood routing. Um, I'll also uh, go over uh, some sources of vacuum that we can e easily get in, in a home workshop. Of course if you're in an industrial setting you can go and spend a lot of money on specially made uh, vacuum pumps. We'll look at some alternatives. Anyway for now let's have a close-up of some of the things I've made with the chuck. Well, this is the uh, small vacuum chuck that I made. The maximum size of the printed circuit boards I anticipated making. And this was determined by uh, the, the size of uh, this, this box. It's a, a box that I use for um, the most electronic uh, projects. And uh, you can see that the circuit board has been sized to easily fit inside there. Here I've milled some slots, they're only a few though deep, to communicate the vacuum to this size board. However, Several of my projects don't need a board quite that big, so I also wanted to be able to do boards of half the size. So what I've done, I've divided the vacuum area into two pieces. Um, the two together are big enough for the larger board, and the smaller one can fit on either side. Now, the construction of this is such I've mentioned the, the milled grid on here to communicate the vacuum. This is the inlet vacuum port, or where we, we suck the, the outlet actually. Now I've drilled down inside through there, down like this, and then meeting up with that are two holes drilled and tapped in here. Now the reason that they're tapped is because I can put a blanking off plug in one or the other. So if I screw this blanking plug here, I've got an O-ring on the end to, to seal, then when I put a printed circuit board on here, I'm not leaking vacuum through the rest of it. And I've drilled and tapped another blank hole up here, which is just a parking place for that so I don't uh, lose it. Now you know that there's two pegs on here, two dowels. They're to locate the printed circuit board like so. But it's not to take the cutting forces that these are here, although they'll help uh, with that obviously. It's, I expect to be doing two-sided printed boards. It's got a copper on each side. Now, the two different sides have to match up with one another. So if I put these are essentially locating pegs so I can now mill the, what's needed on one side of the board and when that's done I can lift it off, reverse it and I've got an accurate X and Y location of the board when it's flipped over so then what's milled on this side will match correctly with the other side. Now for drilling these holes accurately so they fit over the pegs, on the far end of this block, uh, this block incidentally came out of the scrap bin of this length which as you can see is uh, uh, over overly long for the longest printed circuit board that I anticipate at the moment, but I didn't see any point in, in cutting it shorter because uh, leaving as as it is, it gives me some scope for changes in the future. Anyway, as I was saying, on, on this end, I'll put a little drilling jig so I can put, I've got a little clamping bolt here, 
I can put the printed circuit board material in before milling, just lock it down in place, and then I can drill down through these two holes, through this drilling jig, to uh, make a perfectly fitting assembly there. On here I've got two steel top hat bushes, which you can see here protrude through. Now the diameter of these bushes is 5 eighths of an inch, which is the same as the slots in the milling machine table, and that's the reason for it. Having one at each end, when I put it back in the milling machine and line it up with the slots, it always goes back in the same place, so I have no further alignment problems. Because what's important here is that the line between these two dowel pins is at right angles to the travel of the mill table in this direction, so that when I flip the board over to do the second size, then the X and Y relationship is maintained. Now there's just one other thing to consider. With this. As I've got it where this sits flat down onto the chuck and holds the um, printed circuit board very flat, printed circuit boards always have a lot of holes drilled in them where the components fit through. If I drill down through here, then when the drill protrudes through, it would pepper the um, vacuum chuck with a lot of holes, which I don't want it. So I've got this rubber gasket which fits on. This is about two millimeters thick. Now normally the holes that I'll be drilling in a printed circuit board would be less than one millimeter. So the end of the drill doesn't need to protrude through very far and the two millimeters is quite adequate and that will provide a good seal around the, the printed circuit board as well and hold it down. The reason that I don't use the gasket to do the milling is simply that there's nothing to support the printed circuit board in the centre here. And as we'll see later in the uh, video, when the vacuum is put on here, that will pull the centre of the board down something close to about 0.2 of a millimetre. Now that would be too much for milling the very, very shallow uh, tracks in the printed circuit board and in the centre there'd be um, the, the depth of the tracks that were milled would be considerably less than would be around the outside. But that amount of deflection is neither here nor there for the drilling. Now uh, one important aspect that we have to consider if we're going to use um, a vacuum chuck is just how much vacuum we need to hold the work down with enough force so that it can withstand the longitudinal cutting forces imposed when we're milling uh, but also if we're doing a bigger work as a wood routing or something like that there's normally a lifting force from the tool that's not too much of a problem with um, something like a printed circuit board because the uh, the forces involved are, are quite low because we're taking very small cuts but we still need to consider what order of vacuum we need. Now uh, this particular piece is about uh, one and a half inches by one and a half inches. So that gives a surface area of two and a quarter inches. Now because this fits onto this uh, little grid, there's various parts of this that won't be subjected to the vacuum. So let's just say we've got about uh, one and a half square inches on here. Uh, that's active as far as the vacuum is concerned. Now if we have a perfect vacuum that's about 15 pounds to the square inch so that'll give us about 22 pounds holding it down. Now we never have a perfect vacuum so that's the absolute maximum that we can think of and um, that would seem a reasonable uh, value to aim for However, if we were doing some wood routing, something like that, we'd have much higher forces uh, on because we'd be taking much bigger uh, cuts in, in the wood. But we wouldn't be doing anything as small as this, generally. So say we had 
something that was 10 times that size, 15 inches by 15 inches, that would mean the area would be 100 times what this is. So for a given vacuum, we'd have 100 times the force. Now we don't really need that. So what that means is that we can get away with a much lower vacuum. Now shop vacs and household vacuum cleaners, uh, when there's no flow through them, will generally suck down uh, to something in the order of two, two and a half PSI. So uh, if we've got an area of uh, say a hundred times uh, that, if, if we um, uh, had a piece of MDF, we'd have about 1500 pounds holding it down, which is more than, more than enough. So we don't need such a high vacuum and the shop vac would do the job quite well. But a shop vac on something like this would only give us um, a, a few pounds holding it down, which is probably pushing our luck a little bit. Uh, so we need a source of uh, fairly high vacuum. And what I used on here uh, was this pump. Now, uh, th these are available on, on the internet for somewhere between about uh, 1500 dollars or 1500 uh, euros. It's just got an inlet pipe here, which I connect up to a vacuum chuck through these quick release fittings here. Very simple, works very well. But another source that's quite cheap for a, a home workshop is something like this, which is powered by compressed air. You feed compressed air in here, 80 psi, there's venturi inside, that causes a suction on this line. Uh, very, very simple, it's got a silencer on the end so it's not too uh, noisy, and it pulls down to quite a high vacuum. Now another possibility for the home workshop is something like this. Now I haven't actually tried this. This is a vacuum pump off a diesel car engine. Now uh, diesel engines don't pull the same vacuum in the inlet tract as a petrol engine car and uh, so they need an extra vacuum source uh, to power the uh, uh, the braking system. Uh, so this is a pump, it came off a Fiat or Citroen car, I can't remember. It's driven normally by the camshaft in here, so it would be a fairly simple matter to mount this on a base or electric motor here to, to drive it. Another source um, of a very simple cheap home vacuum pump is using a compressor out of a household fridge. Um, quite often you find these uh, uh, that have been scrapped. Okay, well let's check the uh, board for flatness when it's uh, being sucked down onto the uh, vacuum chuck. So I'll move the board into... Lower the gauge down and set it to zero with the pointer in the centre. Turn on the vacuum pump and we can see that it drops by 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 of a millimetre, uh, a bit less than 1 bow. So I'll just zero it again and we'll just move it about, we'll scan the length. Okay, point, uh, point 0.01 of a millimetre difference there. So the maximum that we get is 0 0.01 of a millimetre, which is... Uh, okay, let's repeat that exercise using uh, the rubber gasket uh, underneath it, which uh, my intention is to use for the drilling. So I put the board back on, drop the gauge down into the centre again, zero it. Now at the moment I've got no vacuum on it, the centre's zero, so I'm now going to put the vacuum on and we can see that that pulls down by nearly 0.2 of a millimetre. Let's repeat the process of moving it around. Well let's just set it to zero in this corner then that gives us a zero reference. So I wander along. We can see that on the rubber gasket it's vastly different to um, 
it, it was just playing. Come across. So just going across there, we see that it varies from no deflection to about 0.1 of a millimetre in the middle. We come back to the middle here, and we're down 14 or 15. So that's really too much for the milling, but not uh, for drilling. Let's have a look and see how effective the uh, vacuum chuck is as far as holding uh, the uh, the workpiece down. Uh, so I've got uh, this vacuum port blocked off. I'm just going to use uh, this part for the test and I've got a piece of circuit board here. If I put that in position here, obviously it's not fixed and it can move about which would be unsuitable for the milling. Now I'll turn on the vacuum pump. Let's look at that first. I've got the vacuum pump sitting on the end of the mill table. Put the vacuum pump on and now there's absolutely no way that I can move that by and lift it. It just doesn't happen. Turn the vacuum pump off and it's as loose as can be. That's pretty effective. Well, probably the first step uh, is to drill the locating holes. I can just put this, the board, up against the edge in here, which is just a nice fit over the pegs. That's it, and the board is now drilled for the locating holes. So that should fit perfectly onto the little dowel pins, which it does. Well, I'm ready for the first test now. I've got the uh, blank PCB uh, mounted on here. So I'll turn on the spindle motor. Starting at about 24,000 RPM. I'll turn on the vacuum pump to hold this down. At the moment, you can see this is uh, not, not held down. It is now. All that remains is to press the start button. Well, that's it finished. I'll take it off now and uh, we'll have a look. Well, this is the uh, finished uh, circuit board that we've just seen being milled. Uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, so I think I can call that a success. Come on, fuck me. Fuck it, stop, stop, stop. Okay, well this time I've got the vacuum pump on, so we'll see how much better it is. Okay, well that's the job uh, done, it seems successful that time, I'll take it off and we'll have a look at it.